So hello, welcome. My name is Hart Hoover. Thank you for sticking around. I know it's been a three long days of summit, so your brains are full, and that's cool. Glad you're here. Um, so I'm no dummy. I've been walking around the summit for a few days, just like y'all. I have seen the summit uh, talks that you've been going to, so I've decided to rename this talk Hybrid Enterprise DevOps Cloud Containers. <laughs> so if you're here for a talk like that, awesome. Uh, I wish I could do that last minute, but the open stack, some of the people would get probably mad at me for changing up, and you would too, right? So it's actually called Making Test Driven Development, somewhat bearable on open stack. Um, again, like I said, my name is Hart Hoover. I'm a uh, DevOps engineer at Rackspace. Uh, I help customers with cloudy problems. They want to do DevOps, but don't want to learn DevOps, uh, DevOps tools, so they pay us money to do that for them. Um, our fancy Rackspace hashtag is RackStackATL, if you want to use that um, in tweeting about this session. If you want to take pictures of slides, that's cool. Just make sure to use XPro2 Instagram filter to make me look really good and to make the slide look really good. Uh, red kind of washes out sometimes, so just FYI on that. Um, vision as a company for Rackspace is to be recognized as one of the world's great service companies, right? Uh, to me, what this means in the context of DevOps automation and test-driven development is well-tested equals good service. Customers don't want to pay for something that doesn't work. Uh, I know saying that at the OpenStack Summit is kind of risky, but I'm going to go ahead and say it anyway. Customers will not pay for something that does not work. So um, be sure you test your things. Um, better if you test them in what you want the end result to be rather than writing code, then testing to make sure your code works. Um, the former is a lot harder than the latter. Anyway, test-driven development traditionally is defined by all these words up here that I took from Wikipedia. Uh, essentially, this is red-green refactor that you may have heard of. You write something, it fails, it doesn't work. You write code for it uh, at a very minimal second grade level to get it to work, hackiness, it works. Awesome, let's refactor the code to make it work. Um, that is fine, traditional TDD. Um, currently under fire by a lot in the development community as not relevant anymore, uh, kind of old busted. So today we're gonna talk about some new hotness um, with regards to TDD, even though TDD itself is kind of an older idea. Um, by the way, side note, uh, this is not TDD. Also not DevOps, by the way. Um, the plan, code, build, test, release, deploy operations is a tool chain workflow method to achieve something quote unquote like DevOps. Um, DevOps is more of a cultural movement within your organization or within your team to achieve this workflow in a meaningful, let's depend on each other way, right? Uh, adding testing here makes it a little bit better. Uh, but just because you add testing there doesn't mean you're doing DevOps, right? Uh, DevOps is that cultural thing that I've already discussed. Um, so adding testing before you actually code is more along the lines of TDD, traditionally. Um, testing is a really good idea. <laughs> find mistakes before they happen, right? And before they happen, meaning in production. Uh, finding them in dev, dev or staging. Uh, testing is also a good idea because your team will not hate you. Um, other people on your team, especially if you're on a quote unquote DevOps team where you have ops people working with you, um, if something works fine for you and you don't test it really, it's just kind of like, cool, I think this will work, push. Um, ops will hate you. Uh, and in the end result, the most important, the people that pay you money won't hate you or tweet about you horribly. Um, the problem with implementing TDD or just testing in general on any team uh, basically it comes down to a few things, a few patterns that I've seen among our customer base when talking to them about test driven development or even testing just in general, real automated testing. Um, some companies have a hero culture. The guy or girl who t writes unit tests, integration tests, functional tests, end to end tests, uh, gets no glory if the app works, right? But if the app breaks, the ops guy or girl coming in to fix, fix the problem gets all the glory, right? Um, so we've seen 
resistance to testing in organizations with a hero, hero culture. Um, also seen developers that just don't want to do it. It's either, either out of laziness or just arrogance, like I'm the best, I don't need, I don't need testing. Pfft, we're talking about testing. Testing, testing, really? That was an Alan Iverson reference. I know this is not the right crowd for that. Um, but I've heard these quotes from customers. I just want to write code for my product. I don't want to write tests. Uh, well, it works on my machine with Vagrant, so we're good. Ugh, no, maybe not. Um, I don't do that. There's a QA team that does that. Uh, they do the testing. I don't, I don't do that. Um, another thing I've seen also, big one, leadership pressure. Your boss saying, our date's coming up. Where's my code, right? Uh, or it could be your product manager, project managers, scrum leaders, agile masters, whatever, uh, saying, like, we got to ship. We got to go now. Why are you spending time writing tests? That is ridiculous. Stop that. We have money to make. Let's do this. Uh, time is money. Dev time, a lot of money. Uh, I don't know if y'all saw the hiring sheets out there, the boards, like full of papers. Everyone wants to pay devs lots of money. Um, so spending dev time on testing might be seen from leadership as a waste of money and time. I'm here to tell you that is not the case. I think you should do testing. I think you should do test-driven development. Uh, I know it's crazy, but I think you should be the solution, the change that you want to see in the world, right? Go back to your team and say, I think, you know, maybe our product should be stable a little bit. Maybe. Just a little bit. Uh, and put in the time to do some testing. It will matter a great deal. Um, but there's also another solution. So test-driven development, like as I said before, red-green refactor, right? So you write a test first that's failing, and then you fix it. Like, what if you could just do that all the time, continuously? Uh, that, I think, is the new way to do test-driven development, right? Have something running that's always testing your code. Um, and then write code. And it'll just refresh and tell you what you broke. Um, so we're going to walk through some of that stuff in a second. Uh, some tools of the trade here. We're going to walk through what you're going to need to accomplish this. Uh, first of all, I'm going to point you to a lot of tools that you're going to want to Google later. Um, it's cool. I know you're going to be frantically taking pictures of slides uh, with your X Pro 2 filter on Instagram. Um, but you could just go to heart.io. Uh, I have a uh, post up there with all the links I'm going to talk about, so you just have to remember this. So take a picture of this slide and you'll be good. Cool. Looks like people are doing it. Awesome. Sweet. Um, Heart.io, it's my name, plus IO at the end. Kind of easy. Um, so the first thing you're going to need, infrastructure to run this test on. That's hopefully not your laptop. Uh, for my purposes, since I work at Rackspace, I'm going to pimp Rackspace cloud servers. Um, OpenStack based, OpenStack powered, good stuff. If you have a private cloud lying around that you can use, use that. If you have a public cloud somewhere else, that's cool too. Uh, as long as it's the same, hopefully the same infrastructure that you're running for production, so you can have the same type of environment, right, that you're using tests as production. It's a good thing. Uh, you're also going to want, I don't know, some source control. That'd probably be a good idea. Um, if you are not using, is anyone not using source control for their code today? Yeah, OK, cool. Good, we're, we'll skip that one. Um, so the rest of my talk is going to be mostly focused around Chef um, and configuration management. Hopefully you are using a configuration management platform uh, or solution. I know that there is a million different apps represented in this room. Uh, running all kinds of code. What I do know is that I can talk about the thing hopefully you're going to use to deploy that code on your infrastructure and how you can uh, do some testing on that. Um, there isn't enough time in the session to cover every testing thing for every language possible, so I'm just going to talk about the thing, the code that you use to deploy that app. Cool. By the way, if you do not have a Chef server, one will be provided for you as a heat template. Uh, we have a Heat template on GitHub that you can use against Rackspace's orchestration service that Troy talked about in his keynote um, to deploy a Chef server if you don't have one and want to learn Chef or want to use Chef. Spin up a server with Chef on it. Awesome. Um, 
The first thing you're gonna need when messing with Chef, at least lately, is the Chef Development Kit, which you can get here. It comes with a bunch of cool tools that you can use to generate cookbooks, work with Chef, work with the Chef server, um, like these. Chef is a uh, command line generator for cookbooks, recipes, LWRT, LWRPs, resources, files, all kinds of stuff. Chef Client is where the magic actually happens to actually do a Chef run. Knife is how you interface with your Chef server. Ohi is a uh, service that gathers information about your instances in the cloud and reports it back to you or your Chef runs. And then Chef Zero is a Chef server that runs entirely in memory. All of these things come with the Chef Development Kit, as well as my favorite name for a tool ever, Berkshelf. Uh, Berkshelf is so named because uh, it's easy to Google. It's not bookshelf, like Chef is not easy to Google, Google if you try and do that later. Um, Berkshelf is pretty easy to Google, it's easy to find. Uh, Berkshelf is also a cookbook generator. Um, it will do dependency resolution for you, it'll manage uh, pinning your versions of cookbooks, which is super important if you're doing Chef. Uh, does a whole host of other things, it's great. So, looking at a Berkshelf uh, configuration file, it looks like this. Can you see that? Yeah, cool. Um, so the first point about this, uh, about this Berks file is it uses an API to find information about your cookbooks that you're using. The metadata flag in a Berks file says that this directory that I'm currently in is also a cookbook, so you should look at that too. Uh, then as far as cookbook specifications, you can specify versions. Uh, you can also specify if you just want to run master because you're awesome, yeah, running it master. Um, on GitHub, you can specify a Git repository. It'll just pull that thing down. Um, you can also specify a path. If you have another cookbook that you're testing locally, you want to pull that in, you can do that. Uh, Berkshelf will pull all that stuff together for you in your, kitchen, in your uh, chef run. And I'll demonstrate that in a minute. Another awesome tool, part of the chef development kit, is Test Kitchen. Um, Test Kitchen is a tool to execu execute chef code in different virtual machines in isolation from one another. Uh, test Kitchen is kind of where the magic happens when you want to do a testing chef run. Uh, test Kitchen, you can use OpenStack as a backend, EC2. Mm. You can do uh, Docker, um, DigitalOcean, all kinds of other vendors, as well as Rackspace and OpenStack. A test kitchen configuration file is YAML, and it looks like this. So you're specifying a provisioner. Here you can say Chef Solo, or you can say Chef Zero, or you can just say Chef Server and specify other options. You tell it what platforms you're gonna run on. So in this case, it'd be Ubuntu 14.04. You can say Ubuntu 12.04, you can say CentOS, you can say other things. Uh, there are lots of different platforms out there. Uh, by default, Test Kitchen uses Vagrant as a backend to build machines locally. Uh, however, here I'm using the uh, Kitchen Rackspace plugin, so I'm using a Rackspace public cloud as my uh, build area. Um, so you can specify things like the region you want to build in, uh, the server name that you want to use, image ID if you have a custom image you want to use, what flavor you want to use, and then uh, since we're doing Chef, I want the latest and greatest omnibus for Chef. Um, then down at the bottom, you can run different testing suites. Uh, this one is just running the default recipe, nothing kind of special there. But if you had multiple recipes that you were testing, you could run them here and then set custom attributes. Also included in the Chef Development Kit, I know, there's a lot of stuff included in the Chef Development Kit, you should use it, it's awesome. Uh, Food Critic, so Food Critic is a lint tester for cookbooks. It will look at your cookbooks uh, for common mistakes, uh, output a rule number and what you did wrong, so you can go in and fix that thing. Makes cookbooks a lot more shareable, um, a lot more standard as far as cookbooks between uh, groups of people, companies, etc. cetera. Um, we'll look at Food Critic more in a minute. Uh, chef Spec, so like it says up there, built on our spec, runs Chef in memory. Um, you can mock data four nodes in a service called Fohi. Um, ChefSpec will test things 
uh, all sorts of stuff. I'll show you an example here. Uh, there are a ton of examples here, and again, that's on that heart.io post, uh, this link, if you want to look at tons of chef spec examples. Uh, an example of chef spec here. So you're running chef, so saying, uh, I want to install a package with apps, right? So I'm going to do that with chef spec. And then either testing whether it installed or whether it did not install, right? Uh, we're, well, based on what you're expecting. So you either expect it to install properly or you expect, like, I don't want that package anywhere near me. Don't put that on my box. Um, so that's about it for the Chef development kit. But there's some other things that you're going to want to use outside of Chef DK, which are also great. So we're going to cover some honorable mentions that didn't make the list but are still awesome. Um, server spec. Does anyone in here use server spec today? A couple people. Awesome. So server spec also built on RSpec, but it uses SSH to actually test your server's actual state. So it will look at your server and see what's actually going on. Here's some things that you can test with server spec. An example of Apache, right? So this package should be installed. This service should be running. This port should be listening. Um, another thing that I wanted to discuss is Mies, which is a racker written tool. Uh, it is a chef cookbook generator that includes tons of testing tools, all the stuff that I've already talked about and then some. Uh, it stands for mise en place, which is, I probably butchered, I'm sorry, uh, cooks or uh, French people out there. But um, Mies will generate everything you need for a chef cookbook, all the testing. It's fantastic. I'm going to show you that in a minute. Uh, Rubocop is a Ruby, it is a hook for the Ruby style guide. So it checks code layout, regex, strings, and syntax, all sorts of things. It will tell you if your code will even work. Uh, and finally, Guard. Guard is really cool because it will run while you are writing code and run some tests for you continuously. Back to that continuous testing stuff. Uh, so Guard will test while you're actually working. So every time you save a file, Guard will test it, show you if you did something wrong, um, so you can go back and fix it real quick. I'll show Guard in a second as well. Kind of showing you kind of an intro to all these things so we can look at them all together at once. <laughs> Uh, the cool thing about all these tools that I've mentioned so far is that they are all Ruby, uh, which means you can just include them in a Ruby gem file at once in your directory, in your working directory, and do bundle install, and they'll all download. It's kind of cool. Um, but you're probably thinking by now, get to the OpenStack stuff. We're at the OpenStack Summit. Why are you talking about Chef so much? Um, that's where this stuff comes in at the bottom of the gem file. So test kitchen and then the two plugins, right? Um, Kitchen Rackspace and Kitchen OpenStack. I'm going to be using Kitchen Rackspace because I don't have access to a private cloud today, but I do have access to a public cloud, so I'm going to be using that. Uh, so let's do a demo. Sound good? I'm not going to be a Shuttleworth guy and do a crazy demo, but I'll do a demo. I'm actually going to demo uh, a chef, um, chef development of um, my favorite enterprise Java application, Minecraft. Cool? Let's do this. <laughs> So the first thing I wanted to show you guys was Mies. Um, so let's say you have a cookbook called My App for an application cookbook. Can you all see that? Everyone good? Yeah. Uh, so you just run Mies My App. Oh, looks like I already did this one. That's OK. Uh, oh, yeah, cool. So um, if we scroll up a little bit. You'll see that it created a cookbook, created a readme, created a changelog file, metadata, did a Berk shelf for me, git ignore, so it made a git repo, vagrant file, did some knife stuff, rake stuff, uh, added a gem file. Super awesome. So at the end, and there's my kitchen YAML for test kitchen. So, and guard. Woohoo. 
So at the end, it just says, hey, log in, do bundle install. Um, so let's look at the gem file. So here you can see uh, what I was kind of describing earlier. We've got Workshelf up here at the top. It's got you know, some comments if you want to do that. And then all of your gems here with proper versions, newer versions, just with one command. Super easy to get started. At least have the testing tools in place to easily take advantage of them. So this cookbook is uh, Cookbook Minecraft. It's just straight off GitHub. It is the chef community cookbook for Minecraft, um, altered by me to break on purpose so I could show you some testing. <laughs> um, but it actually does work if you just use it. Um, so the first thing I want to run is guard. So guard says that. Uh, Based on RuboCop style guide, I've got some problems. Uh, looks like I also have a food critic problem. Uh, so let's take care of those RuboCop ones first. Let's see, rake file, line 34. Uh, single quotes. See here, 49. And then, no, I think that's it. Cool, one left. So guard found a problem with my actual test, which is pretty awesome. So uh, cool, so I fixed that. RuboCop says everything's uh, good. No offenses detected, that's awesome. Uh, I did have a problem with food critic, FC007, hmm, oops. So I can look on the Food Critic website, FC007, what did I do? Ensure recipe dependencies are reflected in cookbook metadata. Oh, okay. So I had something in a recipe that included, uh, let's see here, line 20, apt. Apt is not in my metadata. That's a problem. So save there. Just run it all again. Everything good? Maybe. Yes. Cool. So test success. No, no more problems. Um, so granted, I know I just said, like, don't test code after you've written it, but for sake of time, that's what I did. Uh, you can run guard actually while you code. It will check things as you save the file and be good to go. So last but not least, I want to walk through a test kitchen run. So um, I was worried about internet here at the conference, so I did this at my hotel on Monday. I saw some demos fail on Monday, I was worried. Uh, this will work if you do it on a reliable network. Um, so I just straight up recorded this, so I will show you how we did this thing. So I'm basically running kitchen test on this window, and on this one I'm just looking at my cloud server's account at Rackspace with the Nova client. Um, seeing what servers are coming up, what's going on. So I'm using Ubuntu 404. As you can see, I start with nothing. Um, so that's gonna take a second to create. So here's my server being built by Test Kitchen.
Video hasn't frozen, it just takes a sec. Cool. <laughs> so, uh, Rackspace instance built, ready, doing things. Um, installing Chef for me directly. Uh, downloading the uh, Chef Omnibus installer. Transferring files up to my server. Complain about SSL, eh, it's testing, meh. Who cares about SSL? <laughs> uh, cool, so it's just saying like, here's my run list. We're gonna do some Minecraft stuff. Update my app repos. Install Java, again, Minecraft, open enterprise, open JDK <laughs> application. Java things. So now it's installing Minecraft. Just showing you here on the, on the right that server's active, of course, because it's interacting with it. Cool, Chef client finished. So now that Chef has actually run and installed all my stuff, I'm going to have it run tests. So my tests are very simple in this instance, uh, just for time's sake. Uh, just running some server spec tests Uploading my test files, cool. So, OpenJDK should be installed, it is. My Minecraft port should be listening, it is. Awesome, two examples, zero failures. And then it destroys the instance for me. So over here you can see deleted, or deleting, and then finally gone. Just a couple minutes. Um, running a test like this and automating this test, super helpful. You can also automate this uh, test kitchen test inside guard. So every time you make a change, it will kick off a kitchen run for you. And you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, that will take forever. My boss will tell me to go faster, and that's probably true. But you can use Vagrant intermediary, intermediate of actual tests run on the platform that you're going to run your production stuff on. Um, so you can use Vagrant in between that stuff. So uh, as you can see, this server was deleted. But I did run this on a cloud server before this session. Uh, so the ultimate test, does it run Minecraft? <laughs> Let's check. Really, this is just an excuse for me to play Minecraft during a presentation. <sighs> don't tell anybody. Any rackers in here, don't tell anybody. Uh, and if you have Minecraft on your corporate laptops, I know you do, some of you out there, uh, join. Join the game. Serious. Like, pull it up. Let's do this. <laughs> Play. Uh, no. Yeah. So here's the uh, server that we're running against in the cloud, deployed with Chef. Where am I? Maybe I'm in the dark. Let's try this again. Yeah, I am in the dark. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's nighttime. <laughs> I know, right? Like, of course. Trying to do a demo here in Minecraft. <laughs> cool. So maybe you can see it, maybe you can't. I'm trying to bash stuff in the water. <laughs> Yay, Minecraft building things. So I'm gonna leave this server up for a while. Uh, so hopefully when you play, it'll be daytime 
and you can have some fun with it. Um, that's all I really had, uh, except for a couple more things. So if you want to take a picture of this slide, you can. Again, that server will be up for a little while. Uh, so you can play Minecraft on the cloud. Uh, last but not least, the obligatory we're hiring slide, right? Uh, you can go to rackertalent.com if you're interested in that. Uh, we also have a booth out there with lovely recruiters. I would love to talk to you. Uh, and that's all, folks. Any other questions? <laughs> If you have a question, please use the mic. I'll stay here for a minute. Yay. I have a question for you, Hart. Yes. And, um, I know my opinion on it, but I'm interested in your opinion. One of my coworkers, I won't say his name, but it sounds like Srace Quinones. <laughs> um, he says that if you <laughs> spin up a knife cluster, that's actually going to speed up the development of recipes. Wow. What's your opinion on that? Uh, there's no such thing as a knife cluster, but thanks for playing. <laughs> I'll, uh, I hope that that coworker isn't actually your boss. <laughs> Any other questions? Cool. Well, again, I will leave this up uh, for a little bit longer so you can write down the IP or load it in your Minecraft. Uh, let's play together. Let's build something cool. Um, what's that? What? Unpossible. Do it from your hotel. It'll be up for a while, I'm telling you. Trust me. <laughs> just, don't, uh, just don't super hack it, all right? Come on. Don't be that person. Cool. Thank you.